Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are, whatever time it is, good whatever. Well, today is Martin Luther King Day. It's uh, Monday the 21st, and I couldn't think of a better way to celebrate than to work on my guns. Well, okay, yeah, I could think of some better things to do, but the thing is, is my wife's not here. She's away. She went walking with her sister, so yeah. Gives me time to work on my guns downstairs without her asking me questions all the time. Just happened to have gotten a package in, and I've already cut the top off, so I'm not going to show you me cutting the top off. But basically, what it is, it's the KNS Precision Incorporated. It's the uh, small pin non rotation um, pins for the trigger and also the hammer. What's happened with my particular rifle here is that while shooting it, uh, I was at the range one time and I was shooting and it's like, what the hell, won't, why won't my trigger pull? I mean, it was like locked up. What ended up happening, now I've already taken the bolt out of here because I'm uh, working on another gun right now. But uh, basically what happened was that the trigger pin had walked in. And so it went at an angle and being at an angle, it locked up the trigger and I couldn't shoot it. It was terrible. I hated it. So what I ended up having to do was... Wait till I got home, started looking at it. This is the first time I've ever experienced it. And I didn't know what the heck was going on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put, the, put it in. And you guys get to ride All right, once again, it. you can see the uh, gun here. Uh, I'm going to be taking out the trigger and down in there. Oh, I'm sorry, the, the hammer and the trigger. Uh, I figured since I was going to do it, I don't know how well you guys can see down in there. But uh, what I would end up trying to do is uh, go ahead and clean it up, polish it up a little bit. Look back at my... Uh, grip mod for my uh, Ruger 2245. If you look back at that, uh, I mean, I was using a Dremel, some sandpaper, drill, drill bits, and I put a 1911 grip on my, my Ruger. I don't think that you have to have super expensive tools to work on it. Good quality tools, yes. Expensive tools, no. Uh, some of these specialty tools, I don't think you really need. I'm using an Allen wrench. I'm just kind of matching up the the size to it. I could probably use a little bit bigger one here, but I'm going to go ahead and pull out my trigger pin, push it out. There it's. Comes out pretty easy, like I was saying before. I mean, never <laughs> was falling out on me before. Uh, so here's my trigger, the pin. And now I'm going to push this one through. I mean, it pushes out really easy. Why? Because the stupid thing was already falling apart. My disconnect, my trigger. So, get these things out. And what I'm going to do, um, hopefully if you can see this, if it focuses correctly, what ends up happening is that uh, I want to go ahead and polish these surfaces a little bit. So that way, it makes it... Uh, work nice and smooth and on here um, once again I don't know if you can, you'll be able to see it that well let me take a look at the camera while I'm doing this um, just try to get it to focus maybe if it'll it looks like it's focusing okay um, try to polish that inside piece right there where it matches up so that way when I'm shooting it and I bring it down it releases easier Probably put a little bit of a polish on there, a little bit of polish on here. Maybe, uh, yeah, I'm going to wipe this down a little bit. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm not going to bore you to death while I'm doing it. Basically, what I'm going to do is I've got 1,200 grit, sand, 1200 grit sandpaper right here. I'm just going to stone it. I mean, not stone it, but uh, sand it a little bit. All I'm trying to do is polish the edges. That's all I'm doing. Not trying to remove material, just polish the edges. All I'm trying to do is get it to where it's a nice, smooth transition. That's it. Okay, I went ahead and uh, finished polishing up my trigger. Uh, looking on the ground, I, I'm like I said before, I think I said before anyways, I'm going to clean it up my garage. It's like the only clean space I have right here right now. And uh, if you look down there, you can see my old trusty uh, sheetrock knife down there. Or uh, Yeah, uh, that's what I use to spread my sheetrock, but it also makes a really good flat working surface. You can see how I've got 
my uh, 1200 grit sandpaper wrapped around the edge there which helps me to get into those little recesses uh, the recesses being now let's see if I if it'll pick it up uh, I polished the edge here Hope, hopefully you can see a little bit of difference right now versus before um, I guess I might need to move into full light so that way you can see it the best once again I've got it out here right now hopefully you can see a little bit of that shine hopefully it's not too uh, shiny for you but um, sanding polishing uh, with sandpaper you can see a little bit of a difference hopefully you can see like my well I'm just getting shadow but anyways uh, once again also the inside of the hammer polish that up make sure it's in focus for you guys and polish inside of the hammer and also just where it rolls over okay now I've got the parts back in here you can see them on the ground down there uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm taking a little bit of uh, gear oil uh, I've got it from my Harley but what I'm gonna do is just uh, put a little bit on those faces that I just you can see I only need a little bit I'm not trying to uh, get the gun so saturated that it starts to drip um, all I'm trying to do is take these shiny spots that I just covered and uh, put a little think of it as like a little protective coating or layer uh, all I'm trying to do is just put a put enough on there to help it uh, kind of slide a little easier right at the beginning I know it's polished it shouldn't really need help but uh, think of it like I said if you think of it as protection versus just trying to uh, throw a whole bunch in there it might make it easier for you in thoughts of placement okay now I've got my gun what I do is go ahead and uh, put it inside of there uh, I already got my disconnect on there basically all I'm gonna do is just kind of like drop it in if you will except for I don't really want to drop it in and I should, probably should to make it a lot easier because now I'm fighting with the stupid thing I'm ah no wonder why that's what happens when you uh, you're you're watching the camera angle sometimes I had it way on the other side couldn't see what I was doing I wonder why it didn't want to drop in all right so it drops in if I was to push it down you can see my hope my pins aren't quite lined up my holes I don't know if you can quite kind of see through that hole there uh, if I've got it quite on the right angle for the video but there you go I need to line up my holes uh, with that said now I've already opened up my my pieces for my kit so what I'm going to do is now it talks about how you're supposed to get my little bullet piece out here uh, basically what you do take this put the bullet on there if you will and screw it together that acts as a guide to guide it through and make it a little bit easier well let's see how much easier it really is now I'm gonna be doing this for the camera angle not so much my angle so let's see how this works out uh, just trying to let me see here if I can Oh, that was actually pretty easy. Once I turned it around to where I could look at it, I could uh, just line it straight up, pushed it right in. So I'll make that flat pretty much on both sides. Uh, did I get my disconnect? Well, of course not. Hey, I left my disconnect out. Yay. Yeah, that's probably going to happen to more than just me. Anyways, I'm going to push it back down. If you got huge fingers, it makes it a little bit more difficult. This is awesome that this is happening on camera and in front of everybody. But this is this is real life. This is how it, how it's more than likely going to go for everybody. Once again, kind of line it up, pushing it through. I can see that it's started the entering, pushing it through a little bit farther. You can see how it's lined up got a little bit of resistance pushing down pushing up and down you can see now the disconnect is locked in it's it's part of the the gun like it's supposed to be now now just kind of free floating in there something you want to watch out about obviously 
Well, I'll leave that in there for right now. And now I gotta put my hammer in there. Remember, I've already coated it. So I'm gonna let the legs sit on top. Kind of squeezing them down a little bit. Pushing my trigger in here. Okay, I can see that it lines up. Let me get my other pin that I should be putting in there. You know, before that, uh, well, no, let me put this pin in uh, just to help. Well, well, that slid in so easy. Wow. What I wanted to do was push this down to its approximate place and then slide this piece in. And once again, I, it might be easier, uh, harder, I don't know, with uh, because I've taken it all apart versus the way they tell you to do it. But uh, just kind of playing with the trigger or the hammer, pushing it back and forth, moving it like that seems to go in pretty easy. Uh, see that it's sticking out both sides. I, now I need to index it. So that way it can go in correctly. Need to turn it a little bit. I'm sure there's other ways to do it. However, I'm going to do it this way because it seems like the easiest to me. No instructions actually came with it, but I'm sure there's lots online that you can see. Um, if I could only get it on. If I could only get it in. Okay, there it's on. I'm going to rotate it down to where it's over the pin. I'm going to grab my screw, one of the screws that come with it. I'm not going to put it in so hard, so hard that I have to have a backup on it. What I'm really trying to do right at this point in time is just get it started. So once again, I just put it on top of there. I'm just going to start it. Just starting it. That's all I want to do. It's already got blue Loctite type thread sealant on it. Um, whatever they call it, I don't know. You can see the other side's turning. So it's basically started. I just want to get it in there to help hold it. Uh, that's good enough. It's going to hold it. So now what I need to do is get this side in. And push that over a little bit. Unscrew the, the bullet tip, if you will. Take this piece off, put it down, grab my other side piece, coming back, put my side piece on. You can see the little, hopefully you can anyways, if I bring this up and it focuses on it, maybe you can see that, that piece in there. So once again, just dropping it on top of there. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead and get my other screw. It's got a form fitting package. Um, and obviously it fits really, really good because the damn thing won't come out. There it goes. Okay. Once again, I just want to start it. Just put it on top. Just start it in there. Oh, you know what I've noticed? It came off the other side. I guess I should screw it down a little bit harder or a little bit farther. Okay. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a little bit of blue lock tight on there. Now it's starting. It's going in. Now they do give you two Allen wrenches with the kit so that way you can use one on both sides because uh, this side's going in this side's not right now it's not cross threaded it's just not going in so let me go ahead and get my other Allen wrench that comes with a kit put one on this side one on this other side and do a both at the same time. OK, 
get this one started. These are stainless steel pins that are inside of it, so it's a good quality pin. Just tightening it up. And this pin, if you, I wanted to do this so I could show you. See how that pin is? It didn't quite line up, so now I got to loosen it up a little bit. So you can make sure. If you loosen it up, there, see how it went free? Let me back it up just a little bit more. Now, now you're required to drop the Allen wrench. So I fulfilled that. Now let me go ahead and screw this side in. Make it a little bit easier. I'm just going to put it this way and start turning it. Snug. Putting it this way will actually give it a little bit more torque. Snug. That side snug. This side. Now, probably the most important thing is you got to test it. Um, will it lock? It locks back. Will it release? Fire. Oh, and smoothing out that trigger really worked. I can feel that the trigger is noticeably tighter. There used to be just a little bit of play back and forth, horizontal play uh, going back and forth. Now there is nothing. Actually, that looks pretty sweet. Um, because I like this one versus the T-bone style or dog bone, whatever you want to call it. The reason being is if you look at the rest of the gun, the way it's sculptured, that seems to fit really good. Um, on this side, you can also see, once again, fits really good with the rest of the gun because of the moldings on it. I went ahead and, uh, because I went ahead and polished it up a little bit, boy, I tell you what, there is like no play at all on that trigger. It is perfect. Let me see if we can show it on. I'm doing it slow, slow. Look. Man, that came out great. That trigger is... That is great. I love that trigger. Trigger's a little stiff um, because of the springs in there and stuff like that. I could lighten them up. I don't want lighten them up. I'd rather have a little bit more stiff trigger, um, but just smooth. Because it still allows you to shoot good. Even if it's a heavier trigger pull, if you've got a smooth trigger pull, then it works out well. If you've got a, a ratchety, grindy, feels like you're, dr you're dragging a cinder block over the friggin' driveway type trigger pull, even if it's three pounds, it's still going to be not a good trigger. and You're not going to like it. But this is good. When you put your finger on there, I mean, nice, nice release like it that's why wonderful really like it a lot uh highly recommend getting one i mean this just this really really improved my trigger a lot um there's like no play in this freaking trigger at all now um i would say this is more akin to a uh since i don't have one i couldn't guarantee it but i would say this is more akin to a uh like a competition trigger however you want to classify a competition trigger, whether it be a uh, target trigger, marksmanship, sharpshooter, whatever you want to call it. Uh, this is, I'm going to call it a uh, comp, more of a competition style trigger. Look at how much far I'm moving it. If I can show it to you I'm, where I can get it. Look, hardly any trap at all. Awesome. Love it. Highly recommend it, man. Great, good deal.